In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss price elasticity of demand. I'm going to show you how elasticity is different depending where you're at on the demand curve and its relationship to marginal revenue or revenue. And there's a clear relationship between revenue and elasticity. I'm also going to build a table like this and show you how to make the calculations. So I start out as putting price on the y-axis and quantity on the x-axis and the demand curves downward sloping. I want to put some numbers in because I'm going to make some calculations. I'm going to discuss what happens to revenues with movements along the demand curve, up and down on the demand curve. The quantity, I'm going to use the same axis and I'm going to bring that quantity axis straight down. But this time on the y-axis, or the vertical axis, I'm going to plot revenue. It's important to note that these quantities are exactly the same. Notice how revenue rises to a certain point, flattens out, and then begins to fall. That is, as I move downward on the demand curve. I'm not going to do it for you in this video, but price times quantity is equal to total revenue, and that's what I plotted. The top part of the curve is elastic because a price decline causes revenues to increase. The part of the curve where revenue is flat is called unit elasticity. And the part of the demand curve where a price decline causes revenues to fall is called inelastic. Now I want to make some calculations. If price goes down from $10 to $9, price falls 10%. And quantity goes from 1 to 2, quantity goes up 100%. And you divide these out, this equals 10. And this is what's known as price elasticity of demand, which is the percentage change in quantity divided by the percent change in price. This is the formula for price elasticity of demand. Percent change is new minus old quantity divided by the old quantity times 100. Now the percent change in price is the new price minus the old price divided by the old price times 100. And I'll do this calculation for you several times so you can get the hang of it. So the price elasticity of demand from going from 10 to 9 is 10. Imagine price falls again from 9 to 8. Let me get rid of some of this stuff for you first so we can focus on what you're supposed to be looking at. So price falls from 9 to 8, and it falls 11.1%, and quantity goes from 2 to 3, which quantity goes up 50%. And these are the formulas I'm going to use right there. I'll leave that up so you can kind of follow along. 3 is the new quantity, so I have to add 3 is that 3 right here, and then I subtract 2, which is the old quantity, or the previous quantity, divided by the old quantity, which is 2. And I take all this times 100. Then I take all this times the percent change in price, which is 8, which is the new price, minus 9, which is the old price, divided by 9, which is the old price again, all times 100. So I end up with 0.5 times 100 divided by 
negative 0.11 times 100. Now in economics, we often drop the negative sign, and I'm going to drop it here because I'm only concerned about change in. Don't really care about the direction. So this equates to 50% divided by 11%, and this is equal to 4.5. So price elasticity of demand is 4.5. I'm going to delete some of this off and make one more calculation for you. And yes, I did round from 11.1% to 11%. Now, the last one is if quantity, I can say quantity goes up 33% when the price falls 12.5%. Again, I'm taking percent change in quantity divided by percent change in price. So I have 4 minus 3 divided by 3 times 100 is a percent change in quantity divided by 7 minus 8 divided by 8 times 100 which is a percent change in price this is equal to 0.33 times 100 divided by 0.125 times 100. Again, I'm going to drop that negative sign. So let's drop off that negative sign. And this is equal to 33% divided by 12.5%. And price elasticity of demand in this case is 2.7. Let me fade everything back in. And again, the column headings are price times quantity, which is equal to revenue. And the last column is elasticity of demand. And here are the rest of the calculations. I'll let you do them at your own leisure. Now I'm going to shade everything so you can easily match up the table and the two curves. The top part of the curve, or the top part of the demand curve, is elastic. That's where elasticity is greater than one and revenues also rise it's greater than one finally price elasticity of demand is considered unit elastic where price elasticity of demand is equal to one and it is considered inelastic when price elasticity is less than one this has been a short little tutorial on calculating price elasticity of demand.